at its simplest, probability is a ratio. And, and the way we describe it is we say that the probability of an event is equal to the ratio of the number of favorable outcomes compared to the total number of outcomes, or I'll say the number of total outcomes. And so in this definition, we actually kind of get two additional words that we really need to make sure we understand. The first one is what is meant by an event, and the second one is what is meant by an outcome. And here we have favorable outcomes and total outcomes. So let's use an example to kind of um, see how this might work. And so we'll do something that we're probably all pretty familiar with, which is uh, tossing a coin. And so what we're going to say is we're going to say the probability, and I'll just use the letter P for that, of getting heads is equal to something over something. And so in this particular case, the event is flipping a coin, and we are looking for getting heads in that event. So the coin toss is the event, and the favorable outcome is how many of those outcomes actually match this desired outcome, which, which in this case is getting heads. So to better understand this, let's just quickly kind of draw out what this might look like. So if I have a coin, there's my quick coin here. All right, I've got, uh, I've got heads on one side of the coin, and I've got tails on the other side of the coin. So this is the event, and as you can see, there are a total of two outcomes. We can have heads or we can have tails. So we have two total outcomes, and in this case, the number of those outcomes which match our sort of stated desired outcome is one. So we have one favorable outcome. Wow, so one of those two choices gives heads over a total of two outcomes. So the probability of getting heads on a normal coin toss is one out of two, and we can also express that as a decimal, 0 0.5, or as a percentage. We can say it's 50%. So this actually brings up uh, another thing about probability, and that is how do we interpret the numbers of probability? And uh, the best way to think about this is on a number line. So we've got uh, one end all the way down here, and we've got the other end down here. And so probability ranges if we talk about decimal values from 0 all the way to 1, or if we want to think about it in terms of percentages, they range from 0% all the way up to 100%. And there's some words that you need to be familiar with. Um, if something has a probability of 0 or 0%, 0 we say that it is impossible. That is actually a probability term. And likewise, if something has a probability of 1 or 100%, we say that it is certain to occur. So we talk about impossible and certain. And then, of course, in between here, we have a whole range. I mean, our coin toss, for example, uh, falls right in the middle here at 50%. That would be our coin toss, right? The probability of getting heads is 50%. Everything in between 50% and 100%, uh, we can kind of lump together and say that these are likely events. They are likely to occur. And down here, everything between 0 and 50%, we typically say it is unlikely to occur. Now, there's not an exact number value for likely or unlikely, but, uh, but you can kind of get the idea. Things less than 50% are unlikely, and things greater than 50% are likely. So just as a quick recap, the, the key things you need to get out of this is, first of all, the understanding that probability is a ratio that compares favorable outcomes to total outcomes. The second thing is the difference between an event and an outcome. So in this case, our event is flipping a coin, and the desired outcome is getting heads. And then we can list out our outcomes here, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later on uh, to get a ratio of 1 to 2. And then the third thing is understanding just that probability is a range between 0 and 1, or 0% and 100%.
In the second part of this video, what we're going to do is we're going to explore the differences between two types of probabilities, um, and we're going to call those experimental and theoretical probabilities. And really, the difference between these boils down to how that particular type of probability was determined. So um, we can just almost make a little table here, and we've got experimental probability on one side, and theoretical on the other side. And, and as I said, the, what this comes down to is how the different probabilities have been uh, determined. So theoretical probabilities, th those, are, those are probabilities that belong to events that can be calculated. Okay. So we can calculate the probability of an event without um, really just by looking at it. And, and the key to this is because the probability of each outcome, the probability of each outcome is equally likely to occur. So, in, so theoretical probability are events that can be calculated and the probability of each outcome is equally likely to occur. So some simple examples of this would be things like coins. Right? We have heads or tails. 50%, 50%. Dice. Right? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And those are all equally likely to occur. Cards is another one where we have all the different cards, you know, there are 52 of them, and each card is equally likely to occur. So these are all types of things that can be calculated without doing any sort of experiment, uh, and so those fall into the category of theoretical probability. As I just sort of alluded to, experimental probabilities, those are based on events that need data. to determine the probability. So if you think about some, um, you know, if you think about things like, you know, what's the probability of, um, you know, getting in a car accident? Well, that's based on data. We're, we're, we're not going to run, you know, we're not going to be able to sort of just look at that situation and decide because the probability of getting in a car accident is not equally likely to the probability of not getting in a car accident. So Things like things like car accidents would be an example of something that would need to be determined about via experimental probability. Um, you think like in sports, right? The probability that um, somebody's going to make a free throw in basketball that's based on experimental probability, right? We look at you know the data for that person making a free throw, and we can therefore make a prediction of what the probability will be the next time that person makes a free throw based on the previous data that we have. Now the key thing with experimental probability is that the more data we have, the more data leads to better results. And and the key for that is that sometimes if you think about some of the, if you think about these events over here, these theoretical events, we can also run experiments to collect data on coin tosses. Right? We can toss a coin a hundred times and see does the data we get in that experiment match the theoretical values or not. So theoretical probabilities we can also run experiments on but um, experimental probabilities we really can't uh, do theoretical values on. We, we need the data in order to figure it out. So one thing we're going to be exploring in class is um, you know, how can we explain some of the differences between experimental probabilities and theoretical probabilities when differences do exist?